home to Africa, but our brother has been consistent and uh, we're thankful. He mentioned <coughs> land issues. Uh, we're going to start off talking about land, how you can invest, how you can protect yourself. Because land is the real real estate. And Africa has large land. And Ghana is a great place to own land. Uh, but there are some things you need to know. So our presenter uh, worked in the Ghana Lands Department for years. And he has been through the system. So he knows how to protect your interest and your investment. Also, we're going to have a question and answer session, so you'll be able to um, ask any question that you have. I would just ask that you hold your question until the speakers are finished speaking. So at this particular time, I would like for our brother to come and give you an insight on owning land, buying land in Ghana, and how to protect your interests. I present to you Mr. Osofu Dangwa. Greetings, and you are welcome now to Ghana. Apart. Our topic for this evening is acquisition sale and rental of landed properties in Ghana. As we all know, land is a very important issue all over the world. You realize there are wars going on all over the world. He's creating boundaries, all this and that, is because people want to protect land. Because land appreciates. If you have a land, you may buy a land today for about $1,000. And then in about two years' time, the same land can appreciate and you can sell it for $5,000. Uh, in Ghana, when we talk about land, we have different aspects of land. First and foremost is tools, that is tool land, which the occupant of a stool, who is a chief, he owns a land. And also, when you get to a certain part of Ghana, that is in the north and the upper east and west regions, then they call it skins, because then the chiefs, they sit on skins, that high of animals. Whilst in the southern part, they sit on stools carved from wood. So we have skin lands and then we have stool lands. Apart from that, we also have family lands. And then individuals also get land. The government also have land. The government or the state can only have a land by exercising a legal instrument through a publication in the local diaries, whereby they are quite compulsory lands from individuals, schools, families, and what can be. So the government can only have land by acquiring a land through what we call an, an executive instrument. That instrument requires that when the government acquires a land from anybody, he must be paid adequate compensation. And the government can only acquire land in the interest of the public interest. That is either for schools, like uh, corporations, and anything that is in the interest of the public. So how did these schools and the families came by their land. They came by land through conquesting wars. That means uh, in the colonial times or pre before pre-colonial time, uh, the ethnic groups, they moved from one area to the other. When they overpower you, then they capture your land, and then you tend to serve them. So this land, when they conquer the lands, and then families and individuals who are assisted in the war time, they are giving some of the lands and then it becomes theirs. So, if you are interested in acquiring a land in this country, our laws require that 
where you acquire land, you can acquire land either by a lease or by a gift or by a conveyance or by a transfer after which you can mortgage the land and then when you mortgage and you pay the land eventually the financial institution where you have your mortgage after you have paid the land you have paid your mortgage they give you a discharge discharge means the land has come back to you so the land is no more a mortgage now land to have got its uses in ghana you can acquire a land for agricultural purposes. You can also acquire a land for a commercial purpose. You can also acquire a land for industrial purpose. And you can acquire land for any purpose that you want to use. Now, we have residential lands also. At any time when you want to acquire a land, what you have to do is very risky if you just approach anybody it takes you to a site, oh, this is my land, and then you go and pay money for it. You'll be at risk. If anybody wants to transact any land with you, you have to first get a site plan or a map of the land, and then you take it to the appropriate agencies, whereby with the plan, that is the land, the subject matter, which you want to apply. They will just give you a report from the records so that you can know the history of the land. For example, if I have acquired a land from Mr. A, and I give it to Mr. B, and Mr. B is selling the land to you, when you get a plan, you take it to the land department or any of the land agencies, they will check on it and they give you a history. When they give you the history, first and foremost, those people who originally owned the land those who own a large tract of land, we call them Alodia owners. The Alodia owners, they have very big lands, and then they will be giving them out for all the purposes which you intend to use the land for. So, when you acquire land, the first step is make a search. If you do not make a search, you go ahead and buy it. After you bought it, before you see somebody will surface and tell you that I am the owner of the land. Whatever you are paying, that one is your own business. And then you have to renegotiate with it. So to avoid all this thing, take note. If you are interested in any land or anybody mentions any land to you, because you are desirous of acquiring the land, you only have to demand that if you give you a side plan, you may have what we call a document or a deed. As I said earlier on, you have a deed of lease. When you have a deed of lease, it means that the land has not been given to you outright. So it has a term. But in case you are not a, a, an indigene of the country, you cannot have a land for 99 years. You may have a land for a lesser years. That means at the end of every year, you have a grand rent which you have to pay. That means you have to pay a fee for the land and you will pay it annually. And it is subject to renewal. That is after the end of the term. And the rent, in some cases, the rent when you are renting the land for, say, uh, 20 cities for the year, maybe after five years, they will have to renegotiate with you and increase it because land appreciates, as I've said initially. Then, you also have a conveyance. When you say deed of conveyance, when you say deed, what it means that is a legal document. And the legal document can be a lease, it can be a conveyance. When it's a conveyance, we call it freehold. That is outright. Immediately when I give you the land, that's why I give you the land. I can never lay hold my hands on the land because it's outright and it's a freehold. And then you can also be given land by a form of gift. Like maybe if you have done something good for me, or you are my uh, daughter or my son, I can decide to give you a deed of gift 
It means you are not buying the land, and then I'm giving you the land. And also, you can have a deed of transfer. That is, whether a lease or conveyance or a gift, you transfer your interest to some of the guests. Then, after you have acquired a land, that is where you have got your search and you are satisfied that the real owner is the one whose name is on the land. Then you prepare your site plans and then you prepare your documentation. Then you take it to the land agencies. You go there, you process it, and then eventually it will be registered and your name will be put on the land. So if anybody wants to go and do anything with the land, your name will be there always to show that you are the owner of the land. And then when you acquire a land for residential, uh, the residential lands, you have to go to the various district authorities, the district, the municipal, the metropolitan assemblies, they are responsible for that. And first, when you want to develop any land in this country, by law, you get permit from the district or the local or the metropolitan assemblies. And then first, they will give you what we call a development permit. Then after they've gone ahead, they will give you what we call a building permit. So without a building permit, you cannot develop any land anywhere. And then when the permit is given to you, you are given a term, a number of years. It will depend upon the district or the municipal assembly, maybe two years, three years, within which you have to complete the construction work that you do. If you are not able to complete it, it means that you have to renew the permit. Other than that, when they see you on the site, they will ask you to stop work and produce your permits. Now, we also have the planning schemes. The planning schemes, it means where you have a lab for a residential purpose, industrial purpose, a commercial purpose. It must conform to the layout of the specific district, municipal, or metropolitan assembly. Other than that, you cannot develop the land. Because when you are going to apply for the permit, they will see whether the usage, if you are putting up for residential, they have to check from their planning scheme whether your land is in conformity with the scheme they are prepared. Because when they plan the area, they have roads, they have churches, they have shops, they have open spaces, and so many other things. In effect, for instance, when a place is an open space and you go and acquire it, you cannot develop it because the land is supposed to be left there. On this note, I think I will end here, and then when it gets to the question time, I can digress more on whatever your difficulties. Thank you very much. Very good. He has many years of experience um, in the land area. It's important that we protect what we have. Because if we don't protect what we have, it's like we don't have it. So I'm very thankful that he's here. And again, you can ask questions. Um,